Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is your Little Women Atlanta, Season 4, Episode 4, You're Fired. Let's jump on into it, shall we? So we start off with money, going to money and Sam going to see Tanya to check on her, see how she doing with this pregnancy. It's still going along fine. Money went over there to see her to um give her time to relax or help her relax, and she dealing with a pregnancy and she about to pop and have this baby. Then they talked a little bit. Then she talked about she got the baby fever all of a sudden, and now she want to have a baby. So, she talked about it a little more. We seen her go get her, um, go get her checkup to see if she was, um, to see can she and was she able to have a baby. She discussed with the doctor that she had her first son, the C-section, and that her, something about her thing, her inner cavity or something like that. I don't know what the, but it's narrowing that the baby couldn't fit through it or whatnot. So, she told her that to be fine. She in the perfect age range to have a baby. She said she should be able to have a baby right away. And that it shouldn't be no problem with her. Now, she went and did this behind Moreland back in with Moreland and her problems. And he cheating or may not be cheating. We still ain't got a timeline was he was cheating. He first told us he was cheating. Then she turned, well, no, then he turned it around and said he wasn't cheating. This was before they got married and... So she want to have a baby and what's going on with Derek and her other child and seeing everybody else getting pregnant. I guess why not? Why couldn't she have another one? So after that, she went to see more and um, she had some desserts or some candy or something that I tried to seduce him with. She brought her the decision. He said, oh, so you wouldn't have seen the doctor without me. Oh, so you want to have this baby to find out she he got four, she got one. They talked about it while they was dating. They ain't talk about it no more when they got married or after they got married. And with the issues y'all going through, leave that baby shit alone. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Because you don't know if he going to cheat on you or you don't know if you going to... Well, we know you ain't going to cheat on him, but we don't know if he going to cheat on you and if he go run away because you end up losing the ring or the baby. So, money, leave that damn marriage. I mean, leave that darn baby thing alone. It ain't worth it and I wouldn't risk it. You got problems now. You were just what? Not even much a weekend marriage yet, and you talking about... Leave it alone, money. You not ready. You not ready. And more, let's say he got four. He ain't trying to make it five. And that was maybe before he was younger. And hell, child support probably killing him anyway. Because he got four kids in he a truck, truck, truck driver. So, money, leave this baby thing alone. If you that damn thirsty for a baby or you that damn baby people, go on to um, Houston and go spend time with your other child that's almost grown now. Go do that. Just the last thing you need to be talking about is a baby. That's my advice to you to leave that baby stuff alone because morning ain't on board, you on board. So, and matter of fact, since you got this baby fever, why don't you go babysit Tonya, um, kids? Better bet, go, um, help Andrea a lot with hers, hell. Cause Chris ain't never around. Thank God it is. Show him this episode. So go help up with her, too. Matter of fact, if you're feeling double froggy, um, who else got kids? Oh, that's all, all they got kids on. What? You got enough people to cast members on this show to go spend time with the baby. You got baby fever, go spend time with the kid. I guarantee you in about an hour or two, you'll be saying, I I'm, I'm too old. I'm 33 years old. It's time for, uh-uh, I don't want none of the child. You older, you a year older than me. And you talking about a child, you not ready for no child because you got a short attention span and you got a short temper. You're not ready for no child, especially not a baby. Leave that alone, money. So we be back to Sam and Vaughn all in. He then um took our work and school. And the father, this um that boy name 
Nico. This Nico child, but Vaughn all in because he dating Tanya and basically. And without her, without him being there, hell, she gonna be pregnant alone and with Sam. So I guess Vaughn is the next best option. And, and I see why you wanted him to take off work and school for her. he can be there with you cause money wasn't here for all the pregnancy stuff. Um, Sam says she'll be there, but she ain't really there for you here. She need to be focusing on the job, so she can't be there. She ain't got no time or no time in her energy or a day to be talking about sitting around with you with no baby when she need to be going out trying to ask, get herself some exposure or trying to get herself better yet. My, um, better yet, while we on this and exposure and needing jobs, Juicy around here asking people for jobs. Why don't you go offer her your services for makeup? I mean, go do something, Sam. You talking about saying you ain't getting no customers and you scratched out and you ain't got no clients. Hell, go talk to Juicy. Juicy will help you get a job. Hell, I'm pretty sure this, um, dish, whatever that talk show on, Miss Juicy on, they can need the extra makeup people or something. Go talk to Juicy. She'll help you out since you ain't got nothing else better to do. Um, we see at the end of the episode, apparently, um, Tanya then ran into some problems. She at the hospital, and the baby come, and the whole natural thing is out the window, basically. It ain't happening. She can tie that on up and twist that up in the bow cause that ain't happening and sound like the complications took over and as for you having a baby that way, you gonna feel less of a woman if you don't have the baby this way. I don't understand why I'm going through all that pain, but okay, Tanya. Whatever help you sleep well at night and whatever help you feel good, I guess. I wouldn't feel no less of a woman if I decide I wanna have a C section over a natural birth. God, them motherfuckers hurt, I heard. So, whatever, Tanya. Good luck. We gonna get more on you on the next episode. You didn't really get this much this episode. Um, Let me go ahead and get Minnie on out the way, too. She's simple. She's simple and easy. Because the main people I want to talk about, I'm going to save them for last. So, let's go ahead and get Minnie on out the way. Minnie, it been four seasons. And I can say, just the first time since seeing this whole, well, a half of a season, just the most proud of you I ever been on the whole season of Little Women Atlanta. The first three seasons you worked on my everlasting damn nerves. This season, I guess you leaving the messy behind. But also, I did see a clip of you and Juicy getting into it again. But I take these first four episodes of you not being messy off the bat. So, I'm going to let you slide in. You want to do the little five can you was talking with Amanda about it in. You tried with the four K, it didn't work out for you. I think you about tired yourself out before you was ready for it in. Yeah, that's about all you did though, but you did good. You impressed me though. Anyways, though, man, I am proud of you though. I must say though, after four seasons, I finally got a other side of you other than being damn messy. So I am proud of you, and I'm glad you at least tried to do a 5K. And um, you tried your best. I think you um should have took it slow at first, then go fast. But you ran and. That was you out and with your heart condition and all that. I think you just overworked yourself too soon. And there'll be a next time. Don't feel disappointed. You did a good job. Hell, most people don't even much make it that far when it comes to a 5K. Hell, at least you did get past the um the start line. So, many, even though you didn't finish, I am proud of you. And Sam, I'm proud of you too for also... Um, Helping Minnie out, being a support to her, telling her don't feel bad and don't feel disappointed. She tried. There's always next time. Rooster, you worked on my damn nerd. Well, I can't say you worked on my damn nerd. I guess you were trying to be funny or trying to be the comic relief when um, Minnie asked you, telling you she was going to do the 5K. And when y'all met up because y'all don't live with each other no more. I guess you were trying to be funny. I thought you was funny. What you up there basically telling you 
your daughter, she saw somebody else for it and the stuff you said at that table to her, though. But I am proud of you too, Rooster. You actually did was there for her too while she was feeling down and crying. So while I want to get in your ass and tell you about yourself, on the other hand, I can't because you was there for your daughter and... And her time in need, and she feel disappointed and feel like she let a lot of people down, and she ain't let nobody down, because more people wouldn't have made it that far as she did. So, like I said, I am proud of you. You two rules, so I'm proud of y'all. I know the mess the only rep around the corner, so... This proud of me, this episode, I know sooner or later it's going to turn into a piss off and it's going to make me snap on y'all asses. So, I'm going to give you your props here. Remember this, I'm giving you your props now. I'm lifting you up because I'm going to tear your ass down sooner or later. Tanya, I mean, many in your mom, many in the rooster. So, um, who next? Oh, Amanda. No, 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 no. Let's go ahead because they all tie in at each other too. God, it was all about juicing her new career, her new um hiring people. So let's start with Juicy and gone down. So, ju I, so I'm guessing, no, not guessing. So Juicy finally got the um a beer in there. They went to the man and no wait before that. She met with a beer. She talked to a beer about doing the gig, about uh, signing her. A uh, beer was shocked and surprised that she would look at her as uh, wanting to sign her to whatever she got going on. She said, "Oh yeah, I heard your music. I like your music." And um, she was scared. I think was she the one that scared about talking about the little people and little people like to use them or whatnot. I think that was her. I don't think it was her. I think it was her. I think Amanda brought that up or something. Well, anyways, though, she, um, a beer, I mean a beer, uh, Juicy played her song for and told her, yes, I like what you did, like what you did, and I like your song. I like for you to sign with me and to sign with my manager, my friend. Oh, yeah, she did say that about I don't know him, I know you, and I don't know if he trying to use me because I'm a little person, and you know how when it comes to little people, that people like to use and, um, the regular dogs like to use the little people for uh, laughing giggles. Yeah, that was a beer. Now that I think about it, it was a beer. So she tell, she um gave her the um thing saying, No, we ain't greeting. Um, no, he not going to use you. I played your song. We both like your song. He don't even much know you a little person yet until you come to this meeting with me. So she was cool with that. She also let her know that she also wanted to sign Amanda and um, Andrea. Basically, uh, Abira said, I'm okay. Go ahead and sign them. I'm good. As long as they don't come at me sideways, I'm good. And give me no um, BS. We can be good. We can be good. We can be calm. We can be friends or whatever. So... She took into the meeting. The man liked what he saw. She did a little performance for him. And wait, no, first he asked her why they call her Love Vin. She told him that she was bully, and she said that she was a vicious MF. And she performed a little song for him. Got all on the table. He was impressed, so he agreed to sign her. And as he was signing him, no. Before we got to the signing thing, he brought up Amanda and Andrea about the tiny twin. Now let's get to them little things. So Amanda and um Andrea decides they wanna do their little thing and about the tiny twins and um um, um Andrea pregnant and she, that's why I said Amanda only think about Andrea on to think about herself cause if you were thinking about your career and you were just um, starting off at a good point, then you end up letting Chris get you pregnant again. Andrea, that was selfish as fuck. And you ain't think about your sister or your career. The person that went out of town and cried and, Ooh, I miss my baby. Ooh, I want to go home. Ooh, I miss my 
nine kids. Now you're having a third kid. Now you up here got your sister lost in the wind. And you got your sister lost in the wind. And now she don't know what the hell she going to do with herself. Because you didn't win and did, and did the selfish thing and went and got pregnant by an immature little child. So now she's stuck waiting on you to have your baby. And Juicy went and talked to them. She, yeah, Juicy, I don't know why you, Juicy, Juicy, now you a messy sudden other, but you did not have to bring up a bearer, I don't know why the hell you brought up, up, up a bearer, you could at least make them sign the damn contract first before you brought up a bearer, or better yet, don't bring her up at all, because it ain't none of their damn business who else you signing on to your, um, to be a partner with you or whatnot. So, you shouldn't even much told them about a beer. And once you told them about a beer, they was on board until you mentioned a beer. So, as soon as you mentioned a beer, they use, um, Amanda used Andrea as a scapegoat to my she pregnant, and we don't know what we was going to do. So, I don't know why you brought up a beer, um, Juicy. I guess you were trying to be messy. Uh, thought they'll be okay with that and thought that'd be cool or whatnot, but yeah, you shouldn't have bought up a beer. I'm just saying. And Amanda and Andrea, y'all shouldn't let nobody stop y'all people anyway. Anyways, if y'all do got something to do with um, a beer and y'all don't like her and y'all almost fight, but still. Y'all really gonna let somebody y'all got in a disagreement with almost fought stop y'all from making paper? Really? Both of y'all immature now for that one. Cause believe me, rather a beer, a beer, a mama, a beer, a daddy, a beer, a cousin, a beer, a uncle. I wouldn't have gave a damn. If it means me making money, I would have pretended like I ain't see a beer. I would have spoke to her just to play nice. And I would have did what I had to do to make my money and forget a beer was ever there. Y'all let some, y'all let another girl stop y'all from getting y'all money. Amanda, you on your own now. Your sister that made the selfish choice and then got pregnant, and now you all alone now. And you ain't got no, uh, and you don't got the room nor the space to sit up there talking about what you do, what you gonna do, and what you can't do. Hell, you got to take what's offered to you. Hell, your sister now, you better take them kids and shut the hell up and stop being picky. Um, I, I would have said Andrea might be out, but. I'm down. A beer don't talk to me. I won't talk to her. I would at least took the job and see what um Juicy and her manager and Juicy and that man had to offer me. Hell, with or without my sister, cause you ain't gonna do too much with your sister. Cause your sister got to go through nine months of labor, nine months of pain. Then she got to have the baby. Then the baby got to be old enough for her to work, cause you know Chris ain't gonna be there. So what you gonna do between all this time you gonna have off? Sit around twiddling your toes with Jordan. Wishing you could be on somebody's job right now making you some money. Traveling the world like you used to or whatnot. I don't understand why you said no to it. You should have went along with it. Um, Abira said she was going to be cool. Matter of fact, if Abira don't be cool, just ignore her ass and do you. Get your money. Keep your mouth shut and do what you got to do just to get what you got to do with that. Um, get what you got to get to get where you want to get at in line. You let a hoe stop you from making money. Both of y'all. Y'all need y'all asses kicked in the head. I just cannot and we're not with y'all too. And then Juicy talked to the man, the man. She said she tried to sign them, but they not on board right now with the whole situation of them signing um, the tiny twins, so he let it go. Now to Amanda and Andrea by themselves now. So we see them. We see Amanda finally invited to Andrea house. Mind y'all, we didn't see Chris the whole entire time that was there. And, um... We ain't see Chris the whole entire time. I guess he didn't ran off somewhere again, huh? If you like it, I love it, Andrea. I guess you 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 must enjoy this in and out relationship you got. One minute he in, the next minute he out of the wind blowing fun, and he out again. I guess you enjoy that type of lifestyle, huh? Whatever floats your boat and whatever help you get to the next city or next island, I guess. Whatever help you float and whatever help you sleep at night, I guess. Any hold on. They're talking about the awkward moment between the pregnancy. Well, um, 
Andrea telling her mama that she pregnant again at the birthday party. Basically, um, Amanda tried to say it to us straight and tell her, look, you and Chris and our parents need to get along. Don't matter, they got to play fake, they need to get along. They need to get along and find a common denominator and get along with each other. Uh, of course, Andrea taking up for Chris and told and basically said they going to have to deal with Chris whether they like it or not. And ain't nothing they can do about it. We know your dumb... I ain't gonna even must say it. But we know your silly self love Chris and what he do to you and what he don't do to you and love keeping your ass pregnant and love keeping you away from your family. You love every minute of that, don't you, Andrea? Keep on being foolish. Keep right on being foolish. And you keep on stopping. You keep on letting Chris get you pregnant. You gonna have a whole football team. You keep on. If you like it, I love it too. That goes to you too, Miss Thing. Um... And then they talked, and then Amanda brought up a good point about what about the tiny twins? What are we going to do? Um, you pregnant, you can't do nothing. So what are we going to do? How are we going to explain this to Gail? What, um, how are we going to explain this to Gail? Basically, we find out that this little weak health of Katie must got enough common sense nor nerve or dig uh, dignity to stand in front of this woman and tell her, look, I made a mistake. I got pregnant. I put my pregnancy over my career. I could have wetted the head this baby at another sunny day. I decided right now in the peak of my career, God, you looked at it last season, they was almost on the top of their career. They was almost there, almost to the top, and then she ended up getting pregnant by a no good old man baby, a baby boy, a baby man. Whatever baby you want to call him, but I see he ain't no man, so I still ain't calling him no man. He had too much like a baby, in my opinion. So, a baby man, a man baby. Um, so Tanya, um, Amanda decides to meet up, miscommunication. They weren't communicating with each other, they hit a snag, they disconnected. Both of y'all could have used y'all words wisely. Amanda, you could have handled yourself a lot better. You did not have to snap at that lady. Cause remember, that woman did help y'all get somewhere. Uh, did, uh, um, help y'all did get somewhere. Help y'all make some moves all over halfway around the world. So the fact that you guys have told that woman to put your on um, to kiss your ass, and you walk down and you snap her on that woman because that woman didn't know you responded back to that or what you said. All you had to do is say. I responded back to you. See, here you go right here. I responded back to you. The fact that you snapped at that woman, they ain't going to tell her she worked for you. You don't work for her. And you the one here without a job and no manager and nobody to help you get jobs. And the way you snapped at that woman and twisted your neck and were ready to swing on that woman over a disagreement and about the miscommunication. Amanda, I hope you find you a good job that's going to at least pay you by yourself because y'all ain't going to make no money alone. Well, at least not a whole lot uh, um, separate. Y'all will make more money together, and you can't keep your sister from getting pregnant. So you have fun with that, and you snapping at that woman ain't doing you no favor. And then Juicy D offers you a way, a way out by telling you, look, let me work with me. I help you out. Um, sign with me. I help you out. I get you jobs and gigs in. You ain't got nothing to worry about it. Then you told Minnie, I mean, Juicy, no, because up she, you heard about a beer or so. We seen on the next episode where you struggling trying to find a job. So you have fun with that and good luck with it. Good luck with that because you ain't going to get nowhere and you don't know how to control your mouth long enough. So you have fun with that one too. Anyway, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Bye.